Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to learn consignment accounts. And I'm going to do my best to simplify the concepts for you to understand. Now, what is the meaning of consignment? Consignment is a contract or an agreement where one entity, which is a business, gives out goods to another business in another location or an agent, someone else in another location to sell the goods on their behalf in return for commission. And so what we are going to do is that if I am a business, I operate a business, I sell goods, and I have a friend in another location, like I am in Accra and I have a friend in Kumasi, and I want him to sell some of the goods for me in Kumasi, I'll send goods by transport or by whatever means to him in Kumasi, and he will sell those goods and then make a return for me. Now, when he sells those goods for me in Kumasi, then what he's going to be paid is a commission. So the agent who sells the goods is going to be paid a commission in return for the services or the act of selling the goods for me. Now, that activity is called consignment, whereby I relay my goods or I give out goods for another person to sell on my behalf as a business. Now, there are terms that you should understand in this case. We are going to talk about the consignor. The consignor. The consignor is the business who is giving out goods to be sold by an agent. And then the agent who is selling the goods on behalf of the consignor is called a consignee. So the agent in this case who sells for the consignor is called a consignee. And therefore, we are going to see that there is a relationship, a consignor consignee relationship. And then the consignee is going to be paid a commission on the sales that he or she does. Or if it is a business or another business, then the consignee will be paid a commission on sales. That is the meaning. And so that is basically what consignment is all about. I give you my goods, you sell on my behalf, I pay you a commission. I that give you my goods, I'm a consignor. You that receive the goods and sell for me in another location, you are a consignee. And that is a consignment agreement. Now, please take note. I'm not going to take too much time explaining the operating arrangement. I just want to focus on the accounting arrangement. Now, what are the accounting arrangements for consignment? I want to take you step by step so that your understanding will be better. Now, we have levels to this, okay? When I, when I consign goods to you, basically, three accounts, I, the consignor, you know, in the books of the consignor, there are three important accounts that you open. And in the books of the consignee too, there are some accounts that you open. For now, what I'm going to do is that, or in this video, I'm going to limit you to understand the accounts that are open in the books of the consignor. And then the key accounts that the consignee also open will take a question, solve it, and understand how to first of all deal with the accounts. When we are done with the accounts, in the next video, we'll look at other aspects like closing stock valuation and then where there are stock losses, how to treat that as well. And so without wasting my time, let me quickly take you through the accounting arrangement for a consignment agreement. Now, one thing I also say before I begin with the accounting arrangement is that when goods are transferred from the consignor to the consignee, the ownership of the goods remains with the consignor. Ownership is not transferred, so you should understand that the consignor is still the owner. Now, when we come to the accounting arrangement, which is the most important for me now, how to account for consignment. There are two different area aspects or two different ways you can look at it. We are going to prepare accounts in the books of the consignor. And in the books of the consignee, there will be some accounts as well. So that is what you should understand. So first of all, let me show you the accounts that will be prepared in the books of the consignee, uh, consignor, sorry. So in the books of the consignor. Consignor is the one that gives out his goods. Now in the books of the consignor, he is going to prepare goods on consignment account. Now, what do I mean by goods on consignment account? This is a very simple account. 
It's just a T account where we are going to credit the goods that has been transferred out. You know, according to the double entry rule for REL account, we say that credit what goes out. So what we are going to do is that we are going to credit the goods that is sent out on consignment to the goods on consignment account. So that at the end of the period, we close the account to trading account. So it's going to basically be only two entries, the transfer and then the closing off. So it's not any difficult account. Then we also will prepare consignment account, which is a consignment to agent account. The agent in this case is a consignee. So consignment to consignee account or agent account. So the second account is you are going to prepare consignment to agent account, consignment to consignee account. Now, this account is the main deal. This account is the main deal because now, before you confuse yourself, learning so much double entry, debit this, credit is debit date. I want you to picture that this account is a profit and loss account. It works like any other income statement or any other profit or loss account, but it's prepared in a T form. And we know that in a T form profit or loss account, the credit side is for revenue and income, the debit side is for expenses. And so when the credit exceeds the debit, we have a profit. And when the debit exceeds the credit, we have a loss. So this is just like any other profit or loss account. So what we are going to prepare, I'll show you that we line up the revenue on the credit or expenses on the debit and the difference becomes the profit or loss on the consignment. So that is a consignment to consignee account. And then finally, there will be a consignee account. Hmm. What do I mean by consignee account? Now, in a question, in a typical question, there will be a name of the consignee. It could be a business, it could be a business or a human name. The consignee account has some similarities with the consignment to consignee, just that it only factors the expenses of the consignee. When we come to the consignment to consignee account, which is a profit or loss account, all expenses that are incurred both by the consignor and the consignee will be debited. But in the consignee account, we only take into consideration expenses of the consignee. That is the difference. And over here, the difference will not be called profit. The difference will be settled by either bank, uh, by check, through the bank or by bill of exchange. So we'll look at that as well. So these are three accounts to prepare, which I'm going to throw more light on. And then in the books of the consignee, in the books of the consignee, we are going to prepare the consignor account. So just as in the books of the consignor, he is preparing a consignee account. In the books of the consignee, he is also preparing the consignor account. The consignor and the consignee account are the same thing, just that they are in opposite directions. And so all the items that will be credited to the consignee account will be debited in the consignor. All things that will be debited in consignee will now be, will be credited, will now be debited. And those that will be Credited here will also be debited there. So that is just a reflection of each other. So once you can prepare consignee account, is you can prepare the consignor account, just that they are in opposite directions. And the balance on the consignee or consignor account is a cash that is receivable or payable. So on the consignee account, when we finish matching the sales against the expenses of the consignee, in the books of the consignor, the difference is the amount that is due that is supposed to be payable by the consignee into the bank account of the consignor. The same way, the difference will be the same actually. This time, they will show the difference, but they are also supposed to be paid, to pay to the consignor. So this will be receivable and this will be a payable, which will be settled through the bank account or by a bill of exchange or by any other agreement or any mode of payment. So that is how the consignee and consignor account. So don't confuse this with the Consignment to consignee. This is a profit or loss account. For this account, don't even worry yourself. There is just one entry that we make in the account. And then in the books of the consignee, they can also prepare account sales. The account sales 
is also just as a consignor account, just that it is presented in a horizontal way. So the balance on the account sale is mostly the same as that of the consign consignor account. So it's just that you are only preparing the consignor account in a vertical format and you call it account sales. It's very, these two are basically the same thing. Once you know this, you know that. So there is no headache. So most of the focus is mostly on this three because this and that are the same. And so we just turn it up and get a reflection. So this is, or these are the basics or the basic accounts to prepare for consignment. So we are going to pick a question and I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you and then we'll solve a question which is very basic. And then we'll use it to explain this. When we have understood this in the next video, then I'll talk about closing stocks, how to value closing stock. And closing stock will only come in when the goods that were sent on consignment were all not sold. So in the first scenario, I'm going to assume that goods on consignment were all sold. But in a second scenario, part will be sold and part will be left. So that we look at how to treat closing stock. And it's a whole big deal. It's a something that you, if you are not careful, you, you will miss it. And then in the third scenario, we are going to look at where there are stock losses. Then we can finalize or bring down the curtain on accounting for consignment. Okay. So I, I could have explained the C accounts using my own dynamics before I solve a question, but that would be too abstract. Let us straight away look at this question and then we'll solve the question together. During May 2022, Albert consigned 40 boxes of toys, costing 200 CDs per box to his selling agent, Benjamin. Albert paid by check transport charges, 510 Ghana CDs, and sundry expenses, 130 Ghana CDs. After receipt of the goods, Benjamin paid by check, advertising charges, 580, sundry expenses, 140 Ghana cities, and delivery charges, 80 cities. By the end of June 2012, Benjamin had sold the whole consignment for 500 cities per box, on which he was entitled to a commission of 10% and had paid to Albert the balance due. Required, write out the following accounts in the books of Albert. Goods on consignment account. Consignment to Benjamin account. Benjamin account. That is the third one. And then in the books of Benjamin, let's write up Albert's account. Okay. Okay, so this is the question that we are going to solve. We are going to prepare. Now, let me, before we solve the question, let me explain something to you. You see, we are going to prepare the goods on consignment. That one I told you, just one entry, and then we will just close it off. So it's not a problem. But the main account that entails a lot is the second one, the one that acts as a profit or loss account, which is the consignment to the consignee account. In this case, we are preparing consignment to Benjamin account. Now, when we are preparing that account, I said the debit, okay, the credit acts as revenue, the debit acts as expenses. Now you can see from the question that both the consignee and the consignor has incurred expenses. Both expenses will still be listed, so please take note. But we will separate consignor's expenses from consignee's expense under separate headings in the account so that it will be visible and clear. And that is even going to guide us on preparing the third one. So I'm going to prepare the first one. We are starting from the books of Albert. Albert is a consignor. And we are going to prepare goods on consignment account first. So please watch. So this, we call this goose on consignment account. In the books of Albert, Goods on consignment account. Now, I remember that I, I didn't just give any formats. I'm just solving the question straight away. So I'll take time to explain as I solve. Now, when you are opening the goods on consignment account, I told you that the principle with this account, 
That is the first requirement, goods on consignment account. The principle with this account is a real account. Credit what goes out. So the goods are going out. So we are going to credit this. And the corresponding entry will be the second one because it is going to Benjamin. In this case, Albert is the consignor. Benjamin is the consignee. And so we are going to credit it with the total cost of the goods that is going out. But how much is going out? Let us go back to the question and look at something. During May 2022, Albert consigned 40 boxes of toys, costing 200 per box to his agent, Benjamin. So if you want to know the total cost of the goods that is consigned, it is 40 boxes times 200 CDs per box. 40 boxes and it's 200 per box. So the total amount is going to be 8,000. So you see, the question will not even be so direct on the amount or the cost of the goods that is being transferred on the consignment. But they can give you the quantity and the unit price so that you just multiply, like I have done. And so this is what you do in workings. Then you come to the account. The amount you are transferring out or the cost of the goods will be credited because the goods are going out. The corresponding entry is consignment to Ben, to Benjamin. Consignment to Benjamin. Because you are showing that the goods are going out and it's going to Benjamin. That is the meaning. So you credit the account and you call it consignment to Benjamin. That is all you do. But at the end of the period, when you are closing your accounts, this one will also be closed to the trading account. Because once it's going out, it's going to reduce your purchases figure. So you just transfer it to purchases so that it will go back to the trading to reduce the purchases figure. I can do that immediately to close the account. So once I say consignment to Benjamin, if it is only one consignment, that is it. So at the end of the year, I will say purchases. Or I can call it trading account. I can either call it purchases or trading. Any of them is acceptable. Then you can just close this off. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the first account. The first requirement is prepare goods on consignment account. And the goods on consignment account is this. Nothing else goes there. We are done. Very easy. So you just make the first entry by transferring it to consignment to the agent, which in this case is consignment to Benjamin, and then you close it off to purchases or to the trading account. All right. Now let's look at the second requirement. We have to prepare consignment to Benjamin account. So that is what we are going to do now. And that is what I said will act as a profit or loss account. So we prepare consignment to this time, the name is Benjamin. So we won't say consignment to consignee account or agent account. So consignment to Benjamin account. Let me put the currency there. Ghana cities, extended T. Now, once you get to consignment to consignee account, this is what you do. We already have an entry here, which is consignment to Ben. That is a corresponding, and we know that in double entry, every credit entry must have a corresponding debit entry. So once it's on the credit side, it will appear on the debit side. So you call it goods on consignment. That is the title of that account, 8,000. So that should be the first entry you make in the consignment to consignee account. Okay. All right, so now I told you that this account is a profit or loss account. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to go through the question. There are some expenses. In fact, I told you that we are going to list the expenses of the consignor first the expenses of the consignee next, then all the revenue in this case is only sales. Sales will come here, and then the difference will be called net profit if it appears here. If it appeared there, it calls, it's called a net loss. So first of all, the goods on consignment itself is an expense. It's a direct expense, okay? And it's being incurred by the consignee, eh, the consignor, sorry, which is Albert. So let me just call it Albert as a heading with a colon, list all Albert's expenses. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going straight to the question. 
Then I'm going to pick out all the expenses of Albert. We list it. We list all the expenses of Benjamin, the consignee. And then when we are done, we look for the sales and then we find a difference. Okay. So now let us look at this. Now, we are told that during May 2022, Albert consigned 40 boxes of toys, costing 200 CDs per box to his agent, selling agent, Benjamin. Then they continue to say, Albert paid by check, transport charges. So Albert paid transport charges, 510, and sundry expenses of 130. So those are the two expenses that were paid by Albert, the consignor. And I told you, please, look at this as a profit or loss account. So all the expenses come here. So there were some transport fare that was paid, which is 510 Ghana cities by Albert. And then when, that was when he was transporting the goods to the consignee. He also made payment of sundry expenses. One hundred and thirty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the only two expenses that was incurred by Albert. And so, once we are done with that, we will list the expenses of Benjamin as well. We will list the expenses of Benjamin. And how are we going to get the expenses of Benjamin? It's also in the question. We are going to read them. Please take note that the consign goods on consignment is also an expense, but it's a direct one. These are indirect expenses. Then we'll look at the expenses of Benjamin. Let's go back to the question. After receipt of the goods, Benjamin paid by check. Advertising charges, 580. So you can see that. Sandry expenses, 140. And delivery charges of 80. And so for our, our Benjamin, there was advertising expense. Of 580. And there were also some sundry expenses of 140. And there were some delivery charges of 80 cities. Now, all these are expenses. Please take note. This is a profit or loss account. Don't let your mind be so confused that you are looking at consignment to Ben, so it's a different account. And don't let any double entries that you see in any textbook confuse you. Take note that these are expenses. This is income. Difference profit, difference loss. So now we are done with Benjamin's expenses, but we are not done entirely because there should be commission. A commission will be paid by the consignee to the consignor, and it will be deducted as source. So that is also an expense that relates to Benjamin. So let us go back to the question and continue. By the end of June 2022, Benjamin had sold the whole consignment for 500 CD per box. Now, let us pause here and analyze something. This is information on sales. The sales figure was not given directly. We are told that all the consignments were sold. And this is my, even my main focus for this video. I told you that in this video, I'm not going to consider closing stock. The moment we are told that the whole consignment has been sold, it means there are no closing stocks. And so this question has no closing stock. In the next video, I'm going to take a question where part of the goods were sold and part was left. And the part that is left will be the closing stock. And we are going to learn how to do valuation of closing stock because it's very tricky. So now we have information on sales. Everything was sold. We are not told how many, but we are told from the question that 40 boxes were consigned. And so if everything has been sold, then it means that sales will be 40 boxes times the unit selling price, which is given in the question, as 500 CDs. So it means that 40 boxes were sold each as 500 CDs. That is going to give us a total sales of 20,000. So this is how to go by the sales. Okay, so now we have information on sales. Sales will be credited because it's a profit or loss account. So sales is revenue or income. So 20,000 will be credited. So now take note that it is only sales that will be credited. Every other thing is an expense. And then we get profit or loss. Now take note, okay, that will be for the next video. I'll talk about how to treat the closing stock as well. So now that we know this, let us go back to see what happens. So we are told that Benjamin has sold the whole consignment for 
500 CDs per box, on which he was entitled a commission of 10% and had paid the balance due. Okay, so the balance due aspect will not be here. That will be in the last account where the, the payment will be made, either by check or whatever, or by bill, but payment has been made. So that one is past tense. We'll do that in the last account. Over here, the only thing that we need to bring is the commission. The commission is also an expense that relates to Benjamin. And the commission is 10% according to the question. It's always paid on the sales. So 10% on 20,000 is going to be 2,000. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all about the consignment to Benjamin account. It is a profit or loss account where we credit sales, we debit all expenses. But we try to group expenses of the consignor and then we group that of the consignee. So we just have to find the totals, just as we do for balancing of accounts. Now you can see that 20,000, the credit side is bigger than the debit side. So we have 20,000 and then we have 20,000 on the debit side. The difference will be called net profit. And ladies and gentlemen, if you add up and subtract, the difference is 8,560. And that is our net profit on the consignment. So you can see that this is a very simple thing to do. Just transfer to consignment to men and then close it to purchases or the trading account. Then you come to the main account. This shouldn't be a problem. Don't worry your head. Credit sales, debit all the expenses. And then the difference will be profit if it appears on the debit. If it appears on the credit, it becomes a loss. So now that we are done with the consignment to men, still in the books of Albert, we are left to prepare a last account, which is the consignee account, that is Benjamin's account. And I'm going to show you that side by side so that your understanding will be complete. Okay. So having done with this, we are going to prepare the last one. So let's look at, in the books of Albert, the last requirement is to prepare Benjamin account. Now, Benjamin account is a consignee account. Let me show you how that works as well, finally. So... So Benjamin account. Now, take note that the Benjamin account is a return account, okay? So what we are going to do is that it's like we want to look at the sales made by Benjamin and expenses incurred by Benjamin so that the difference will be paid to us through the bank account. So what we are going to do is that the things here are just what we are going to write, with the exception of that which relates to Albert. So this time, sales will be debited. Sales will now come to the debit side of the Benjamin account, so that corresponding goes to sales account. So sales, 20,000. So this is the sales that has been made by Benjamin so far. So we have to list the expenses of Benjamin in the Benjamin account, because the account is Benjamin account. We can't include anything of Albert. So every expense incurred by Benjamin will be on the credits like that. So we'll put advertising here, 580. Then there should be sundry expenses, 140 Ghana cities. Then there is delivery charges of 80. And then also there is a commission that is already relating to Benjamin, 2000. So in other words, this is what it means. I consigned goods to you, Benjamin. This is in the books of Albert, the consignor. So you have made sales to me in my books. I recognize that you have made sales of 20,000. You have incurred this expense, fine. Pay me the difference. You have paid yourself commission. So the difference will be paid to me through my bank account. And that is the essence of the Benjamin account. And that is why we don't even bring in that of Albert. So once we put the sales and the expenses related to uh, Benjamin, we are done. We just balance off the account. And in balancing off the account, we all know that the 20,000 is the bigger. So the debit side is big. We put 20,000 here. The difference will be 17,200. We are going to call it bank. We are calling it bank because we are going to take this money from him into our bank account. So we debit the bank account with that. And we are told from the question that it has even been paid and therefore has been paid to the bank account. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how to go by the Benjamin account. Very, very simple. And it tells you consignment in itself is not difficult. We are left with one more requirement, which is in the books of Benjamin. We have to prepare Albert's account, just as we have prepared Benjamin's account. 
Now, let me tell you that that Albert account we are going to prepare is a mirror reflection of the Benjamin account. In other words, everything is the same. Only that what is at the debit comes to the credit, and these ones move to the, the, the debit. Then the difference of 17 to will be shown on the debit, and that is all. Because in the books of Benjamin, Benjamin is going to pay the money. And so when this bank appears on the credit, on the debit, then it should appear on the credit of his bank. So that it means that he's paying. And therefore, the last requirement is basically the same. And it is even the same as the account sales, which will be presenting, presented in a vertical form. And so I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to do a mirror reflection. And then I will tell you it is in the books of Benjamin. I'll prepare Albert's account, just as in the books of Albert, we prepared Benjamin account. And just, just this is the same that we are going to do. So you could even know that when it comes to consignments, the most important thing is this. This is the longer one. This is not much difficult. This is just two entries, and then you are done. So let me prepare in the books of Benjamin, the Albert account. Okay. All right, so we are on the last requirement. This time, we are going to prepare in the books of Benjamin, Albert's account. So in the books of Benjamin, we prepare... Albert's account. Now, remember that I told you that it's a mirror reflection. Okay, so whatever you have here, sales, is on the debit, so it will now appear on the credit. And all these expenses, in fact, it's the same thing that we are going to bring here. So let me show you and I will explain. So we put sales here. This is Albert's account, this is Benjamin's account, but it's the same thing, a mirror reflection. So sales is 20,000 on the credit. Then all the expenses will be listed here. Advertising, 580. Sundry expenses, 140. We have delivery expenses of 80, and then there is a commission of 2,000 Ghana cities. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the same thing. The difference, total is 20,000 for both sides, and the difference will be sent to bank, 17,200. So look at this and compare. There is no difference between the two. Only, the only difference is that it's a mirror reflection. Now, what it means is that in the books of Albert, he is expecting to receive this money into his bank account. In the books of Benjamin, he is also looking to pay this money from his bank account. So this one will appear on the credit of bank for Benjamin. That he is losing the money. This will now appear on the debit of bank for Albert. That he's taking that money. So Albert is taking this from Benjamin. Benjamin is paying this to Albert after taking the commission and then incurring all the expenses out of the sales. And that is what it means. Okay. And so. Basically, this is the most important account in the books of the consignee. So most of the questions, you need to prepare more accounts in the books of the consignor. That is the goods on consignment, the consignment to agent, and then the agent or the consignee account, which I just did. And then in the books of the consignee, this is the consignor account. But I told you that when the names are given, you, know, you will not say consignor account. You mention the name of the account, Albert account. And that is what we have studied. So please take note. Remember that I even mentioned of some account sales. Account sales is just a vertical presentation of what I have done. So this time, we'll look at the vertical presentation and see sales, less expenses, and we'll still arrive at the same 17,200. So it's not really an issue for me, but I will talk about it in the subsequent video. I am sure that your understanding on consignment has come alive, but we are not done yet. We still have to learn how to value closing stock. In this question, we assume that Everything that was given out was sold. In the next video, we are going to look at a question where part of the goods will be sold and part will, re will remain. And we need to value that as closing stock. And I will teach you the criteria for closing stock valuation. I will also talk about stock losses and how to do that valuation in the books. That is all we have to do for consignment now. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for part two on consignment, it is bye for now.